Alvin, go yourself down the hall there and collect a friend. Hello, Jim. Hi, Jim. Morning, fellas. Angeline, quickly, please. What are you doing? We'll be just a second here, please, sir. Mr. Zuckerberg, this is an administrative board hearing. You're being accused of intentionally breaching security, violating copyrights, violating individual privacy by creating the website www.facemash.com. You're also charged with being in violation of university policy on distribution of digitized images. Before we begin with our questioning, you're allowed to make a statement. Would you like to do so? I... You know... I've already apologized in the Crimson to the ABHW, to Fuerza Latina, and to any women at Harvard who may have been insulted, as I take it that they were. As for any charges stemming from the breach of security, I believe I deserve some recognition from this board. Uh, I'm sorry? Yes. I don't understand. Which part? You deserve recognition. I believe I've pointed out some pretty gaping holes in your system. Excuse me, may I? Yes. Mr. Zuckerberg, I'm in charge of security for all computers on the Harvard network, and I can assure you of its sophistication. In fact, it was that level of sophistication that led us to you in less than four hours. Four hours? Yes, sir. That would be impressive, except if you had known what you were looking for, you would have seen it written on my dorm room window. Anybody here want a lawyer? No. No. Ms. Carter, you brought your own. Mr. Gallagher, do you want a lawyer, sir? No. Good. Please rise. Court is now in session. Judge Seymour Watson presiding. The people versus Fielding Mellish. Counsel, are you ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor, we are. Mr. Stark, please. Yes, dear. Can I have your attention? Absolutely. With all due respect, Your Honor, these circumstances that you speak of include illegal wiretaps and tainted evidence. I mean, this is a classic fruit of a poison tree situation. Tell the court why you think he is a traitor to this country. I think Mr. Mellish is a traitor to this country because his views are different from the views of the president and others of his kind. Differences of opinion should be tolerated, but not when they're too different. Then he becomes a subversive mother. The issue here is not whether we broke a few rules or took a few liberties with our female party guests. We did. We don't know anything about mess boys eating strawberries. What is this breaking and entering charge? The accused is charged with breaking and entering into a private home located at 242 Lotus Drive in Brentwood. It happens to be my residence. And yours as well, Mrs. Parks. Naturally. And you are filing the similar complaint? I am not. You don't mind him breaking and entering? The accused came there seeking my help. At your invitation? No, but he had no place else to go. The police were chasing him. Mrs. Barnes, you mean to tell me you aided and abetted a known criminal? I asked him to leave, but he pulled a gun on me. He threatened your life? No, not really. There weren't any bullets in the gun. Well, how do you know? He told me. You told her? I didn't want to scare her. We used to be married. But come sundown, there's going to be two things true that ain't true now. One is that the United States Department of Justice is going to know what in the good Christ, excuse me, Angie, is going on around here. And the other is I'm going to have somebody's ass in my briefcase. How do you plead, guilty or not guilty? Oh, guilty, but with a real good excuse. They plead not guilty? The defendant is not guilty. You're the one who's guilty. I'm going to set your bail at $3,000. Your bail is $20,000. $50,000 bail. For fifty thousand, two thousand dollars, and better throw this jackass out of my court. Yes, Your Honor. Call the first witness. I swear to tell the truth, the old truth, and nothing but the truth. Officer Dowd, have you ever had sexual relations with a girl with really big breasts? Yes, sir, I did. Mm -hmm. And how did you find it? Very erotic. So, I was just checking. This isn't easy for you. Is that a question? Did you say utes? Yeah, two utes. What is a ute? I am instructing my client not to answer that question on the grounds of self-incrimination. Well, didn't Anson Harding tell you that the mess boys ate the strawberries? Miss Wyndham, did you hear a shot fired? No, I was in the shower. OK. So sometime in the 20 minutes that you were in the shower, your father was shot. I guess. Your father was shot while you were in the shower, but you 
didn't hear the shot because, um, because you were in the shower? Okay, Your Honor, with all due respect, past and present, and without further to do. The prosecution is not going to get that man today. No. Because I'm going to get him. Now that I recall, he, uh, he might have said something about mess boys, and then again, he might not. My priority is to get the citizen. Iron Man weapon turned over to the people of the United States of America. Well, you can forget it. I am Iron Man. The suit and I are one. To turn over the Iron Man suit would be to turn over myself, which is tantamount to indentured servitude or prostitution, depending on what state you're in. Can't have it. Uh, look, I, I know uh, experts. In prostitution, of course not. You're a senator. Come on. <laughs> I, I'm no expert in weapons. Call what's going on around here a leak? Boy, the last time there was a leak like this, Noah built himself a boat. Your Honor, uh, th this is the type of uh, testimony that on the surface seems quite silly. We done earlier that day. I got up, got a latte, went to the gym, got a perm, and came home. Do you believe in God? I beg your pardon? It's a simple question, Miss Brown. Now, do you want me to repeat it? I'm sorry, for a moment I thought you asked me if I believe there's a God. That is precisely what I asked. I see. Well, I have no way of knowing. Are you a Christian? I was christened in the Catholic Church. Well, are you a Christian now? I suppose I am. Do you believe in our Lord Jesus Christ? I believe in the teachings of Christ. Am I being tried for witchcraft? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I've known Fielding Mellish for years, and he's a warm, wonderful human being. Uh, would the clerk read that statement back, please? I've known Fielding Mellish for years, and he is a rotten, conniving, dishonest little rat. So before you continue... No, I want to have this marked. This, uh, this commission is prepared to act on a motion denying the Rothstein application. Denying? Do I hear a motion seconded? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I second the motion. Do I have a vote on the motion? Mr. Chairman. I, I. Hi. Well, now, ah, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the of 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 the j -j -j <clears throat> jury um on 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 on, on January fourth of this year my client did indeed uh visit the Saka Suds um 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 convenience store but, but, he didn't, um, kill anyone. He, he, uh, um, uh, <sighs> we, we intend to prove that the <laughs> prosecution's case is circumstantial and, 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 oh, <laughs> uh, Coincidental, thank you. That's it. Mm. What about everything we talked about? Well, I get a little nervous. A little nervous. Now, I'm getting better. You want to tell me why you'd go and do a damn fool thing like that? Then shouldn't we blame the whole fraternity system? And if the whole fraternity system is guilty. And isn't this an indictment of our educational institutions in general? Your Honor, I'd like to say a few words to the court, if I may. Well, you're going to have to stop slouching and stand up to address this court, sir. All right. Well, in all honesty, I don't feel that what I've done is a crime. And I think it's illogical and irresponsible for you to sentence me to prison. Because when you think about it, what did I really do? I crossed an imaginary line with a bunch of plants. 
I mean, you say I'm an outlaw, you say I'm a thief, and where's the Christmas dinner for the people on relief? Huh? You say you're looking for someone who's never weak but always strong to gather flowers constantly, whether you're right or wrong. Someone to open each and every door, but it ain't me, babe, huh? No, 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 it ain't me, babe. It ain't me you're looking for, babe. You follow? Yeah. Gosh, you know, your concepts are really interesting, Mr. Young. Thank you. Unfortunately for you, the line you crossed was real, and the plants you brought with you were illegal. We should treat the witnesses hostile. Hostile? I see you hostile! Carbon fiber, 28 caliber, Maine, China. If you want to kill a public servant, Mr. Maroney, I recommend you buy American. Get him out of here. Your Honor, I'm not done. He's acting on my instructions. You don't get paid to act on your instructions. He gets paid to abide by and to enforce the law. What kind of man was Sean Noakes? Did you see the two men as they approached the table where Mr. Noakes was sitting? Would you say you were his best friend? Did you hear the shots? Did you buy the tickets for the game, Father? Were they given to you? How long did you know each other? And what did they do? What was their behavior after, after the shooting? Uh, did anyone know you were going to the game other than the two defendants? And at that time, Mrs. Sinemus, did you see their faces clearly? Made by check, MasterCard, Visa. He was asked his opinion. And of the two men you saw in McHale's are in this room today, like a father, a good father, looking out for one of his sons. Could you point them out for the jury, please? And is it true then, as a good father, you would want to protect them from something they shouldn't have done? Are you aware of any enemies he might have had? Like a murder. Let me get this straight then. No one knew you were going to the game. No one saw you at the game. No one saw you buy tickets for the game. There's no record you even bought tickets. You have no receipt for the tickets. Am I correct? Then how do we really know, Father? How do we know you and the two defendants were at the game on the night of the murder? Uh, objection, Your Honor. Thank you. No further questions. I have no further questions. And Your Honor, I do intend to participate actively in this trial. You're an attorney. Object, Your Honor. I'm security. He didn't do it. Now, 14 of them chose to give him a television set. An unlikely coincidence? My client did not steal my car. He was lying on the floor when I drove away. My husband was upset because his car was taken by the Indians who worked for us. The Indians? Our Indians? Yes, Your Honor. Dismissed that charge last week. Jack. Sparrow is not my name. My name is Joshua e. Gibbs. Is that so? This is Jack Sparrow here. I told him I am not Jack Sparrow, who I would be happy to identify to the court if it would help my case. Well, I think there would be a poor defense unless you want to be bludgeoned again like a harp. I'm not asking what you heard. I'm asking what you saw. And what else? Oh, that's a very lovely watch, sir. Do you have a receipt? No. Clerk, arrest this man. Objection, Your Honor. Defense is fondling one of the jurors. Sustained. Honor, how can the jury accurately estimate the testimony being given here unless they first know the reason behind this whole trial? Why Lieutenant Mannion shot Barney Quill? Now, the prosecution would like to separate the motive from the act. Well, well, that's, that's like trying to take the core from an apple without breaking the skin. Well, now, the core of our defense is that the defendant's temporary insanity was triggered by this so-called trouble with Quill. And I beg the court, I, I beg the court to let me cut into the apple. Our objection still stands, Your Honor. Objection overruled. You know Mr. Quinn? Yeah. How do you know him? He asked me if I would help him find out what happened to Joey Diaz. I show you photo stats of two cashier's checks drawn on the flagship National Bank made payable to the Committee for a Better Miami. You've seen them before. Yeah, they're mine. For what purpose did you make these checks? To contribute to the committee. Well, why was that? Because they do good work. 
You aware that the committee is interested in the political career of Mr. Uh, Quinn? So? That's okay with me. Let me point out that these checks were drawn immediately before and immediately after your meeting, Mr. Quinn. What do you make of that? I don't know. What do you make of that? Oh, come on, Mr. Gallagher. Are you trying to say that you just got an urge to contribute to his committee before you met with him, and then you just got another urge right after? Yeah, I came into some extra money a couple days later. All right. You made these contributions anonymously. Why? I wanted them to be anonymous. How then? Tell us why. I didn't want a lot of other people coming around asking for contributions. The reason you made these contributions anonymously is that you were paying off. Prove it. Did you look at their faces? Did you really, really look? This is so nice. I glanced at them when I walked by, but I did see them. You glanced. You didn't look. I saw them. You glanced at them. Through the eyes of a very frightened woman who maybe had too much to drink. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please look into your hearts, place yourself in Mr. Marchek's position, and return a verdict of not guilty. Thank you. Approach. I move we dismiss claim for damages on the grounds that those women were not his sh- Your Honor, I object. You would! Bastard! Hey! We need to strike that from the record, Your Honor. It's speculation. So strict. Overruled. You can't handle the truth! Overruled. Mrs. Kramer, can you tell the court why you are asking for custody? Because he's my child. Son, we live in a world that has walls, and those walls have to be guarded by men with guns. Who's gonna do it? I know I left my son. I know that that's a terrible thing to do. Believe me, I have to live with that every day of my life. I have a greater responsibility than you can possibly fathom. You weep for Santiago and you curse the Marines. You have that luxury. You have the luxury of not knowing what I know. I've since gotten some help. You don't want the truth because deep down Places you don't talk about at parties. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. Billy's only seven years old. He needs me. We use words like honor, code, loyalty. We use these words as the backbone of a life spent defending something. You use them as a punchline. I'm not saying he doesn't need his father, but I really believe he needs me more. I have neither the time nor the inclination to explain myself to a man who rises and sleeps under the blanket of the very freedom that I provide and then questions the manner in which I provide it. I was his mommy for five and a half years. And Ted took over that role for 18 months. I would rather you just said thank you and went on your way. Otherwise, I suggest you pick up a weapon and stand a post. Either way, I don't give a damn what you think you are entitled to. I don't know how anybody can possibly believe that I have less of a stake in mothering that little boy than Mr. Kramer does. I'm his mother. I'm his mother. If I can be of any help in this case, Judge, it's my pleasure. Objection. My client is not... You save your objections, Counselor. This ain't a courtroom. To overrule the objection. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. You played it coming here. <laughs> Sir, you're out of order. Order, order. Uh, Your Honor? Shut up! Right down, down, Mr. Vigoda. You're out of order. <clears throat> Your Honor. Henry Ward Beecher, in Proverbs from the Plymouth Pulpit, 1887, said it. And I this is excuse me, century, Your excuse Honor. me. I'm going to make a mark of you the court. I am afforded the right to speak in my own defense, sir, by the Constitution of the United States. This is the same document about which the guarantees my liberty. Of the United States. Now, liberty, in case you've forgotten, is the soul's right to breathe. I mean, it cannot take a long breath. Laws are girded too tight. Without liberty, man is a sinko. Man is a what? Ibid, Your Honor. 
Well, before I begin my closing remarks, I'd like to congratulate Miss Kelly on a defense which has been so entertaining and imaginative. I must confess to you, I, I didn't know whether to refute it or to simply give it a round of applause. And then they killed Nikki Capelli, one behind the ear with a 22. Richie loved to use 22s because the bullets are small and they don't come out the other end like a 45. See, a 45 will blow a barn door out the back of your head and there's a lot of dry cleaning involved, but a 22 will just rattle around like a Pac-Man, you know, until you die. Thank you, Mr. Antonelli. You're welcome. Were you apprehended or did you surrender? Surrendered. He was apprehended. He was apprehended after he surrendered. He didn't surrender to me, therefore he was apprehended. He was going to surrender to my husband after dinner. I told him to wait in the kitchen. And did you wait in the kitchen, Mr. Gardenia? No, I had to serve dinner. That's not all I get. Well, perhaps you'd like to enlighten the jury as to what else the government is giving you in exchange for this testimony. Sure. I get to never see my parents again, or my loved ones. I get to live in a place... It's okay, don't get me wrong. The air is clean, people are nice. But for a guy like me, who was raised on the sidewalks of a city that never sleeps, it's a living hell. There were times when I thought of giving it all up, particularly when my wife left me. They gave us a nice house with flowers in front. It made us sick. But I made a deal with the government, so I'm here to tell the truth. And if you think I'm saying what I'm saying about Mr. Gatso killing Nikki Capelli only because of the deal, you got a point. But it's still the truth. Your best friend is suing you for $600 million. I didn't know that. Tell me more. Your Honor, I would like a continuance! This case has already been delayed several times, Mr. A. I realize that, Your Honor, but I would really, really, really like a continuance! I'll have to hear good calls, Counsel. What's the problem? I can't lie! Commendable, Mr. Reed, but I'm still waiting to hear good calls. Now, do you have one or not? Not! Most for continuance denied. Is there any chance of a settlement in this case? I don't think so, Your Honor. My client has already offered Mrs. Cole $2.4 million, but Mr. Reed has made it abundantly clear that he has no desire... Settle! To... Settle, 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 settle! I... I am confident that you gentlemen will review without passion, the evidence that you have heard, come to a decision, and restore this man to his family. In the name of God, do your duty. I tried to run the ship properly with a book, but they fought me at every turn. If the crew wanted to walk around with their shirt tails hanging out, that's all right. Let them. Take the tow line. Defective equipment. No more, no less. But they encouraged the crew to go around scoffing at me and spreading wild rumors about steaming in circles and, and, and then old Yellowstone. I was to blame for Lieutenant Merrick's incompetence and poor seamanship. Lieutenant Merrick was the perfect officer, but not Captain Kui. Object, Your Honor. This trial is a travesty. It's a travesty of a mockery, of a sham, of a mockery, of a travesty, of two mockeries, of a sham. I move for a mistrial. Do you realize there's not a single homosexual on that jury? Yes, there is. Are there no decent, God-fearing Christians among the Bolsheviks? Does one have to be God-fearing and Christian to be decent? Senator, the Bolsheviks believe that it's religion, particularly Christianity, that's kept the Russian people back for so many centuries. Many of you would ever been to Russia and seen the peasants, you might think they had a point. 
On the subject of decency, Senator, the Bolsheviks took power with the slogan and end to the war. Within six months, they made good their promise to the Russian people. Now, the present president of the United States of America went to this country in 1916 on a no-war ticket. Within six months, he'd taken us into the war and 115,000 young Americans didn't come back. Mm -hmm. That's how decent, God-fearing Christians behave. Give me atheists any time. By the way, Senator Oberman, in Russia, women have the vote, which is more than you can say for this country. Let's be honest here. Twenty million dollars is more money than these people have ever dreamed of. Oh, see, now that pisses me off. First of all, since the demur, we have more than 400 plaintiffs in. Let's be honest, we all know there are more out there. They may not be the most sophisticated people, but they do know how to divide, and $20 million isn't shit when you split it between them. Aaron. Second of all, these people don't dream about being rich. They dream about being able to watch their kids swim in a pool without worrying that they'll have to have a hysterectomy at the age of 20, like Rosa Diaz, a client of ours, or have their spine deteriorate like Stan Bloom, another client of ours. So before you come back here with another lame-ass offer, I want you to think real hard about what your spine is worth, Mr. Walker. Or what you might expect someone to pay you for your uterus, Miss Sanchez. Then you take out your calculator and you multiply that number by a hundred. Anything less than that is a waste of our time. By the way, we had that water brought in special for you folks. It came from Well and Hinkley. <laughs> I think this meeting is over. Damn right it is. You don't know what that ought is, Mr. Trash. I'd show you, but I'm too old. I'm too tired. I'm too fucking blind. If I were the man I was five years ago, I'd take a flamethrower to this place. Mr. you are out of order. You're out of order. You're out of order. The whole trial is out of order. They're out of order. That man, that sick, crazy, Out of order. Who the hell do you think you're talking to? The convicted purveyor of narcotics. No, never convicted on no dope. The indictment is dismissed. The prisoner's discharged. Call the next case. This is such a crock of shit. I think I know where we're headed here. The First Amendment. My client is not required to reveal her sources you of information. You know that's all, horse bucket, Counselor. The First Amendment don't say that, and the privilege don't exist. Uh, you're welcome, I what? guess. Because I'm your nuclear deterrent. It's working. We're safe. America is secure. You want my property? You can't have it. But I did you a big favor. I have successfully privatized world peace. <laughs> what more do you want? For now! I tried to play ball with these ass clowns. F you, Mr. Stark. F you, buddy. We're adjourned. We're adjourned for the day. Okay. You've been a delight. I put it to you, Greg. Isn't this an indictment of our entire American society? Well, you can do what you want to us, but we're not going to sit here and listen to you badmouth the United States of America. Gentlemen! Ah, uh, but the strawberries, that's, that's where I had them. They laughed at me and made jokes, but I proved beyond the shadow of a doubt and with, with geometric logic that, that a duplicate key to the wardrobe icebox did exist. And I'd have produced that key if they hadn't pulled the cane out of action. Uh, I know now they were only trying to protect some fellow officer and, Your Honor, may I approach the bench, please? Proceed, Mr. Tango. No further questions, sir. The court is closed. It's OK. Your Honor, I've been a policeman for 12 years. 
and I think it's the best organization in the country. Thank you. Ray, please, Ray, will you let me handle this? Do you have anything to add, Mr. Cash? <clears throat> yeah. No. Yeah. No. This whole thing fucking sucks. I mean, this is the biggest problem in the world. Order. Your Order. 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 Order, please. I assume from these statements that these gentlemen here are willing to plea bargain in return for admitting the innocence of Mr. Gotti. Is that correct, gentlemen? Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I'll have a statement from the media. We don't like it. Oh, apparently we've cleared everything up. And all before lunch. Oh, I love things when they zip along. Case dismissed. Court adjourned at 2 p.m. I'm going to the state bar. You're a lunatic. You can't do this to me. He's not just a lunatic. He's a pervert, too. He plays with himself in the men's room. And he cheated on me, Daddy. He had sex with a dead body in your offices. You're fired, Cobb! Have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. We, the jury, find the defendant, Clay Shaw. Is it the Tracy Marcinko's curls were ruined when she got hosed down? Because they got wet? Exactly. Because isn't it the first cardinal rule of perm maintenance that you're forbidden to wet your hair for at least 24 hours after getting a perm, at the risk of deactivating the ammonium thyglocolate? Yes. And wouldn't somebody who's had, say, 30 perms before in their life be well aware of this rule? And if, in fact, you weren't washing your hair, as I suspect you weren't because your curls are still intact, wouldn't you have heard the gunshot? And if, in fact, you had heard the gunshot, Brooke Wyndham wouldn't have had time to hide the gun before you got downstairs, which would mean that you would have had to have found Mrs. Wyndham with a gun in her hand to make your story plausible. Isn't that right? She's my age. Did she tell you that? How would you feel if your father married someone who was your age? You, however, had time to hide the gun, didn't you, Chutney? After you shot your father. I didn't mean to shoot him. I thought it was you walking through the door. Order, order. All right! I did it! I did it! I'm guilty! But I couldn't take it anymore. She kept tormenting me. Edging me on! Making a fool of me! Isn't this Epstein versus Epstein? Ms. Vito, please answer the question. Does the defense's case hold water? No. The defense is wrong. Of course she is. Are you sure? I'm positive. How could you be so sure? Because there is no way that these tire marks were made by a 64 Buick Skylark. These marks were made by a 1963 Pontiac Tempest. Objection, Your Honor. Can we clarify to the court whether the witness is stating opinion or fact? This is your opinion? It's a fact. I find it hard to believe that this kind of information could be ascertained simply by looking at a picture. Would you like me to explain? I would love to hear this. So would I. The car that made these two equal length tire marks had positive traction. Can't make those marks without positive traction, which was not available on the 64 Buick Skylark. And why not? What is positive traction? It's a limited slip differential which distributes power equally to both the right and left tires. The 64 Skylark had a regular differential, which anyone who's been stuck in the mud in Alabama knows you step on the gas, one tire spins, the other tire does nothing. Yes, bro. Is that it? No, there's more. You see, when the left tire mark goes up on the curb and the right tire mark stays flat and even, mm -hmm. well, the 64 Skylark had a solid rear axle. So when the left tire would go up on the curb, the right tire would tilt out and ride along its edge. But that didn't happen here. The tire mark stayed flat and even. This car had an independent rear suspension. Now, in the 60s, there were only two other cars made in America that had positive traction and independent rear suspension and enough power to make these marks. One was the Corvette, which could never be confused with the Buick Skylark. The other had the same body length, height, width, weight, wheelbase, and wheel track as the 64 Skylark, and that was the 1963 Pontiac Tempest. And because both cars were made by GM, 
Were both cars available in metallic mint green paint? They what? Thank you, Ms. Vito. No more questions. Thank you very, very much. You've been a lovely, lovely witness. Elliot, what'd you figure you'd do after government service? I'm not quitting. There ain't no presidential appointee, Elliot. The one that hired you was me. You got 30 days. American naturalist wrote, a patriot must always be ready to defend his country against its government. I'd hate to be in your shoes today. You have a lot to think about. You've seen much hidden evidence the American public has never seen. You know, going back to when we were children, I think that most of us in this courtroom thought that justice came into being automatically, that virtue was its own reward, that that good would triumph over evil. But as we get older, we know this just isn't true. Individual human beings have to create justice, and this is not easy, because the truth often poses a threat to power, and one often has to fight power at great risk to themselves. People like S.M. Holland, Lee Bowers, Gene Hill, Willie O'Keefe, have all taken that risk. They've all come forward. I have here some $8,000 in these letters sent, sent to my office from all over the country. Quarters, dimes, dollar bills from housewives, plumbers, car salesmen, teachers, invalids. These are people who cannot afford to send money, but do. These are the ones who drive the cabs, who nurse in the hospitals, who see their kids go to Vietnam. Why? Because they care because they want to know the truth, because they want the country back, because it still belongs to us, as long as the people have the guts to fight for what they believe in. The truth is the most important value we have, because if the truth does not endure, if the government murders truth, if, it, if we cannot respect the hearts of these people, then this is not the country in which I was born in, and it's certainly not the country that I want to die in. Tennyson wrote, authority forgets a dying king. This was never more true than for John F. Kennedy, whose murder was probably one of the most terrible moments in the history of our country. You, the people, the jury system sitting in judgment on Clay Shaw, represent the hope of humanity against government power. In discharging your duty, and bringing the first conviction in this house of cards against Clay Shaw, that's not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Do not forget your dying king. Show this world that this is still a government of the people, for the people, and by the people. What is it in us that seeks the truth? Is it our minds, or is it our heart? I set out to prove a black man could receive a fair trial in the South, that we are all equal in the eyes of the law. That's not the truth, because the eyes of the law are human eyes, yours and mine, and until we can see each other as equals, justice is never going to be even-handed. It will remain nothing more than a reflection of our own prejudices. So until that day, we have a duty under God to seek the truth. Not with our eyes and not with our minds where fear and hate turn commonality into prejudice, but with our hearts. Well, we don't know better. I want to tell you a story. I'm gonna ask you all to close your eyes. I tell you this story. I want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to yourselves. Go ahead. Close your eyes, please. This is a story about a little girl. 
grocery store one sunny afternoon. I want you to picture this little girl. Suddenly a truck races up. Two men jump out and grab her. They drag her into a nearby field. And they tie her up. And they rip her clothes from her body. Now they climb on. First one, then the other. Raping her. Shattering everything innocent and pure. Vicious thrust. In a fog of drunken breath and sweat. When they're done, after they've killed her tiny womb, murdered any chance bird of their children, have life beyond her own, they decide to use it for guardian practice. They start throwing full beer cans at her. Throw them so hard. Tears the flesh all the way to her bones. Then they urinate on her. Now comes the hanging. You have a rope, tie a noose. Imagine the noose coiling tight around her neck. A sudden blinding jerk. She's pulled into the air and her feet and legs go kicking and they, they don't find the ground. The hanging branch isn't strong enough. It snaps and she falls back to the earth. Now they pick her up, throw her in the back of the truck, drive out to Foggy Creek Bridge, pitch her over the edge. And she drops some 30 feet down to the creek bottom below. Can you see her? Her raped, beaten, Broken body, soaked in their urine, soaked in their semen, soaked in her blood, left to die. Can you see her? I want you to picture little girl now imagine she's white Defense rest, you You people have been chosen to the 
reveal our existence to the world. You will witness what happens here today, and you will tell of it later. All eyes to the front. Now's a good time to fuck it. Shut your fucking mouth! You must watch, dear. It'll all be over soon. Now you will receive us! We do not ask for your poor! Or your hungry! We do not want your tired and sick! It is your corrupt we claim! It is your evil that will be sought by us! With every breath! We shall hunt them down. Each day, we will spill their blood till it rains down from the skies. Do not kill. Do not rape. Do not steal. These are principles which every man of every faith can embrace. These are not polite suggestions. These are codes of behavior. And those of you that ignore them will pay the dearest cost. There are varying degrees of evil. We urge you lesser forms of filth not to push the bounds and cross over into true corruption into our domain. But if you do, one day you will look behind you and you will see we three. And on that day, you will reap it. And we will send you to whatever God you wish. And shepherds we shall be, for thee, my lord, for thee. Power hath descended forth from thy hand. I'm cool we swiftly carry out thy command. So we shall throw river forth to thee, and teeming with souls shall it ever be. In nomine patri, it feeling. Spirit of Sante. Nothing further, Your Honor. See you in court.